Yellowstone Caldera Supervolcano Eruption and Activity Review of 2018. This is from the USGS. They have an observatory there, and this is from their Caldera Chronicles. I'll leave a link below for you for this. Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles is a weekly column written by scientists of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. They say even though they missed the start of the year because of the government shutdown, they want to provide us with the 2018 year in review. The first Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles of 2019. So concerning the geyser watchers, surely one of the most memorable years, they say, in a long time. Geysers were the story of 2018, especially Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin. Steamboat is the tallest active geyser in the world, but major water eruptions are usually rare, sometimes with years between events. But in 2018, it erupted a record setting 32 times. The previous record was 29 eruptions in 1964, and the geyser was quite active in the 1960s and early 1980s. So this recent activity is not unprecedented by any means. Most geysers in Yellowstone are like steamboat. They do not erupt on regular schedules. Old Faithful is an exception. Certainly the spate of activity was an exciting sight for the millions of visitors to Yellowstone National Park in 2018, and many tales of steamboat eruption graced social media this past summer. The first steamboat eruption of 2018 occurred March 15, following two additional eruptions in April and one on May 4th. On May 4th, University of Utah and Yellowstone National Park scientists deployed seismic sensors around this geyser. The instruments recorded data through four eruptions before they were collected June 4th, immediately following an eruption. At Old Faithful, data like these have helped map the plumbing system and eruptive patterns of that geyser in unprecedented detail. Hopefully the data collected from Steamboat will similarly illuminate how that intermittent geyser works. Steamboat was not the only geyser in Yellowstone showing enhanced levels of activity in 2018. Giant Geyser in the Upper Geyser Basin, not far from Old Faithful, also erupted repeatedly 29 times according to the Geyser Tables database. The last time Giant was so active was in 2007-2008, when it erupted several dozen times. There was also a rare eruption of Ear Spring in the Upper Geyser Basin in September, an eruption that brought decades of human-generated garbage to the surface, like coins and a cinder block and even a baby's pacifier, which was associated with the formation of new thermal feature that forced the closure of the boardwalk. The University of Utah scientists also responded to that event with the deployment of seismic sensors. We don't know why intermittent geysers experience periods of heightened activity separated by months to years of dormancy or very infrequent eruptions. It is possible that the availability of water in the subsurface is a contributing factor. Yellowstone has experienced especially heavy precipitation in recent years. In fact, recent research suggests that subsurface water plays a role in earthquake activity as well. A comprehensive analysis of Maple Creek earthquake swarm, which produced over 2,400 local earthquakes a few miles north, northeast of West Yellowstone, Montana, during uh, June, September 2017, was completed in the past year. The results of the study documented in a recent Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles article suggest that water moving through the subsurface caused existing faults to rupture, which in turn resulted in more fluid movement, creating a feedback cycle. Water may actually be the cause of many earthquake swarms at Yellowstone. Speaking of earthquakes, 2018 was a pretty average year for Yellowstone in that respect. The University of Utah Seismograph Stations, which is responsible for the operation and analysis of the Yellowstone, Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 2,007 earthquakes in Yellowstone during 
2018. This is right on par with the average one and a half to two and a half thousand earthquakes per year for the region. The year did start quickly in terms of earthquakes with a flare up of 2017's Maple Creek Swarm resulting in over 700 local earthquakes in February 2018. But that was the only month with more than 200 local events. The February seismicity was probably a continuation of the 2017 Maple Creek Swarm in that area is where it's historically one of the most seismically active regions of the park. Overall, the 2018 year, where there were 21 seismic swarms, according, accounting for 1,289 local, located earthquakes, 64% of the total number of events. The largest earthquakes of 2018 were a pair of 3.1 events that occurred during the February swarm, only three events in the Yellowstone region were reported felt during the year. There were no significant changes in ground deformation in and around Yellowstone during 2018. The area near Norris Geyser Basin continues to rise. While all stations in the caldera continue to subside, in both cases by about two centimeters, that's less than an inch over the entire year, these patterns continue the trends that have been ongoing since 2015. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenge families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.